Thanks, Marianne. Uh, it's my great pleasure to give this uh, uh, virtual finance uh, uh, seminar. So this is uh, a joint paper with John Liu at the CU Education and, and Michael Salking at the UT Austin. Um, Michael is also here uh, and he will help me answering uh, any question you might have in the chat box. He will also join me in the Q&A. Uh, the title of this paper is Data Privacy and the Temptation. Um, so two years ago, uh, Jack Ma of Alibaba set up a, a, a think tank called the Lohan Academy. Uh, I joined uh, the academy as an uh, advise, uh, academic advisor. So through there, I participated in uh, a bunch of sort of uh, uh, discussion and workshop about uh, uh, things related to digital economy. I think privacy issue is a thing, uh, one of the topic that uh, got a lot of attention and this sort of eventually motivated uh, uh, me to start this project. Um, quickly, sort of, uh, many of you observed the uh, uh, digital economy and the fintech, a lot of uh, uh, um, development in the last few years. And the big data uh, is supposed to float uh, basically uh, this new economy, right? However, um, a lot of concerns, especially about uh, uh, data collection uh, by these digital platforms like uh, Facebook, like Google, um, uh, uh, might potentially invade uh, personal uh, privacy, right? Um, in response to the, uh, these concerns, uh, European Union uh, established the so-called uh, GDPR, General Data uh, Privacy Regulation, uh, in May 2018. We actually started the project shortly after that. And uh, to our amaze, um, earlier this year, uh, California also put up its own uh, regulation, the so-called California Consumer Privacy Act, CCPA, uh, which became effective uh, at the beginning of this year. So these uh, privacy regulations, they all aim to protect uh, consumer privacy, uh, as well as uh, trying to ensure the proper operation of the uh, digital economy. However, they have some very important differences. As I will elaborate more later, a key difference is the uh, is, is the, the default setting. Both uh, regulations sort of give consumer the option to opt in or opt out of uh, uh, data sharing, but uh, the default choice is different. Uh, GDPR is about uh, everybody is out. Uh, uh, These uh, uh, firms and platform cannot collect any consumer data un unless uh, a consumer explicitly opt in, uh, agreeing to share data, all right? And uh, CCPA is the opposite. So the presumption is that uh, firms can freely collect any data unless uh, a consumer explicitly opt out, telling uh, 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 firms uh, stop doing that. So, so this sort of uh, uh, is the sort of exactly opposite in the uh, uh, default setting. But nevertheless, uh, both regulations give a consumer the, the, the choice, right? You can choose to opt in or opt out so that uh, uh, by choice, you can protect yourself, right? So, I mean, uh, which of these uh, uh, policies are more effective and, uh, and uh, in terms of uh, sort of protecting sort of uh, uh, consumer welfare? So this sort of uh, motivated the demand for normative analysis of privacy uh, regulations. So this is sort of basically is the, uh, uh, the motivation for this study. There has been extensive literature focusing on uh, uh, privacy issue, uh, mostly done in the IO literature and the focusing on price discrimination as sort of the key uh, reason for protecting privacy, right? Uh, there are various reviews already here, uh, as I listed in the slides. A key trade-off in this literature is about uh, uh, sharing data improves matching efficiency, right? Uh, by making data available to sellers, sellers can tailor sort of their products and their uh, marketing uh, toward the sort of consumers who need the, their products, right? In this way, it improves matching efficiency. But at the same time, uh, data uh, allows firms to pre discriminate consumers because they know so the exactly the reservation value, uh, reservation price uh, of the consumers. So the net effect of this uh, on consumer surplus uh, is ambiguous and also it depends on uh, uh, market setting, whether the market is competitive or not competitive. So, 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 so the, the effect actually uh, is quite subtle, okay? So here in this uh, study, we are gonna uh, uh, focus on a new approach, trying to derive a preference, consumer's preference for privacy more directly through sort of a, the so-called temptation utility. 
okay? So meaning sort of uh, some consumer might have certain vulnerability. So in this case, what we focus on is temptation. Uh, let me quickly uh, 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 make this as clear. I mean, I'm sure everyone is familiar with temptation, but just make this as clear as possible. Here's an example. Uh, it's a, a story we, we saw from the internet about the compulsive gambler. So he tries to recover from gambling. He deleted all the casino apps from his smartphone. He removed his profile from all the major gambling sites. He even set up a rule in Gmail to automatically delete any email related to gambling. But nevertheless, one day he logged on to YouTube. 99% of the advertisement he saw on YouTube are actually for gambling. So basically sort of a, uh, 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 th this story shows the frustration uh, uh, for people who have temptation, trying to avoid the temptation, but nevertheless uh, uh, may not be able to do so if uh, 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 his data uh, is freely available to, to, to sellers, okay? So, so this is sort of where uh, we see sort of a, a collection, connection between uh, uh, privacy and uh, basically temptation, okay? Um, temptation is basically a problem about the uh, self-control, right? A lot of examples. I already mentioned gambling. And the video game probably is an even more relevant one. In 2018, the World Health Organization uh, for the first time recognized uh, gaming disorder as a disease, right? Uh, the majority of uh, uh, gamers are probably uh, uh, would not experience anything close to addiction, but nevertheless, some gamers do struggle with addiction, right? In fact, actually for uh, uh, video game companies, those who suffer from addiction actually are the sort of most desirable players, right? So because uh, they will buy more and even they will buy fancy stuff in the game. So there's a big industry around this. Um, here is a chart showing sort of three industries, the uh, global sales of three industries, music, films, and video games. So you can see uh, 20 years ago, at the beginning of 2000, uh, these three industries are about the same size, right? So during the past 20 years, rapid growth uh, in video games. In fact, uh, uh, by now, video games are already uh, more than 2.5 times uh, the sum of the other two, right? So this sort of shows you sort of uh, 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 the, the relevance of uh, 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 this issue here. In fact, uh, uh, Mark Agia, uh, 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 my Princeton colleague, actually, I uh, recently wrote a macro paper showing that uh, gaming reduced labor supply of young men uh, in the U.S. between the ages of 21 and 30 uh, by 1.5 to 3.1 percent since 2004. Well, it's not a huge number, but nevertheless, it's a number actually, so shows some actual macroeconomic relevance here, right? And uh, uh, there are other examples. I'm not. I'm not going to get too much into it, e-cigarette, uh, online alcohol, adult films, and perhaps more relevant to finance, payday loans, right? So, so all these sort of uh, uh, industries that in some, some extent build on temptation, basically, right? And uh, uh, I don't have to emphasize more, all of these industries have uh, been using big data to target the consumers, especially those uh, severe ones with potential addicts, right? Um, so before I get into the uh, model to show you how so the temptations are, are related to privacy, so, so let me sort of uh, clarify a few uh, conceptual issues. Data sharing may expose tempted consumers uh, to temptation good. And uh, as a result of that, inducing the net social loss, this will be sort of a, a key sort of a point uh, that eventually show up in the model I present. Right, so in this way, so it's different from price discrimination, which has been the emphasis of the existing economic literature on privacy, uh, our data privacy. It's about the price discrimination, which is sort of a distributional effect, right? When firms uh, price discriminate consumers, they charge more, right? So basically they benefit from the uh, loss of consumers, but the, on the net actually is sort of a zero sum, right? But on the other hand, uh, 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 temptation actually may induce actually a, a net social loss. So which makes sort of this uh, uh, mechanism more compelling in that sense, especially in terms of sort of uh, uh, thinking about uh, 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 privacy regulation. Um, another thing is the competition, right? Um, competition uh, can be very helpful in uh, mitigate uh, uh, price discrimination, but uh, uh, competition does not cure temptation, right? In fact, actually might be exactly the opposite. Competition actually may motivate the firms to actually work even harder to exploit consumer temptation by making their products and their ads even more tempting, right? 
So there's this book by James Williams, which is a, a required reading for all the incoming Princeton undergraduate students in 2018. Actually, make this very nice sort of a, a point that actually in the digital age, uh, uh, technology all face this sort of uh, uh, issue, right? In order to compete with other uh, technology, basically compete for people's limited time, they end up actually uh, making their products more addictive because they want to hook up the, the users, right? Uh, in fact, actually, the ongoing uh, challenges faced by uh, uh, Twitter and, uh, and the Facebook, right? So whether they should, uh, uh, you know, in some way discipline uh, Trump's sort of a divisive message sort of shows that actually, uh, our technology actually in this sort of uh, 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 current sort of environment may, uh, may not be able actually to do sort of what we think they, they could, right? Competition won't solve the problem often, right? So um, <clears throat> uh, coming back to sort of, this is not the, uh, what I'm gonna do here. So this is just uh, maybe an important topic for another day. So, so I, I want to sort of uh, uh, say a few more about sort of temptation. Uh, another important thing about temptation is that uh, reminders and the disclosure uh, do not reduce temptation, even though uh, uh, they help to mitigate another problem, consumer problem, so-called the consumer neglect, right? So in banking, we know uh, 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 consumer overdraft is a key source of uh, uh, revenue for banks, right? Uh, uh, in that context, actually sending uh, uh, reminders uh, to them, to, to uh, uh, depositors that they're going to overdraft and uh, uh, disclose the fees around that can help uh, mitigate the problem. But the sending reminders of disclosure uh, uh, probably cannot solve the temptation problem. Many of these people actually know they have this problem, they just cannot help uh, uh, when they're when the, when, when, when the, uh, uh, tempting sort of a, a burger is on the table, right? Or when the sort of a, a video game is right one click away, right? So, so this is sort of the problem we, 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 we need to deal with. Um, <clears throat> so because of this, uh, 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 consumer temptation motivates uh, privacy regulation. In fact, actually, uh, we don't have to uh, say anything more uh, uh, because uh, uh, GDPR and both GDPR and the CCPA are already there, right? So in that sense, sort of uh, uh, clearly regulate, recognize uh, the importance to put up the uh, suitable regulations. But on the other hand, uh, 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 which uh, regulation uh, is effective and how do they aff uh, affect uh, 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 consumer welfare uh, and, uh, and my well sort of uh, uh, social welfare, this is sort of the question still I think remain open, right? right? So both GDPR and the uh, CCPR are there. Uh, often people view GDPR as more sort of pro-consumer and the CCPR is pro-business, right? So how do we sort of uh, uh, compare the two? So, so which one is more effective? Uh, this is sort of the key issue we want to address here in this, uh, through this uh, uh, model. I'm going to present you a very, very simple model, okay? Uh, now, uh, let me get into the model. So uh, this is a model to evaluate how consumer uh, privacy uh, uh, um, uh, sharing screen, uh, data sharing uh, scheme might affect uh, uh, consumer welfare uh, when some of the consumers are subject to uh, temptation, all right? So we're gonna consider ecosystem around the digital platform. So you can think of this as uh, Facebook or Google, uh, whatever. Um, so, so in this ecosystem, uh, we have uh, two consumption good sellers for simplicity. Uh, one is a normal good, good A. Uh, think of this as sort of a, a music. Uh, we also have another temptation good, good B. So you can think of this as gambling or video game, okay? Um, and uh, uh, there's a continuum of uh, potential consumers in three types, okay? Type S, so strong willed. So, they can always uh, resist temptation and they will only consume good A, the normal good. So we also have a, a weak willed type, type W. So uh, uh, the weak willed, uh, they want the normal good, but on the other hand, uh, they may not be able to cave in to, uh, uh, to the temptation good, good B, okay? So, so, so we, we need to have this mix. And we're also gonna introduce a third type, let's call this type O. So this is a group that, 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 that do not care about either good. Uh, they will never buy either A or B. We need them there, so they are sort of the noise when we talk about sort of uh, when, when, when seller need to screen out consumers, right? Type O are there, so the uh, acting as noise, okay? So here is a chart uh, with these uh, three groups of consumers uh, uh, in, the, uh, in this ecosystem. 
I'm going to build off this chart later to show you sort of a, a different equilibrium under different uh, data sharing scheme. So the blue color here, so this is sort of the group of uh, uh, strong real consumers who only want to buy, who, 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 who would like to uh, 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 get advertisement about the normal good and who can always resist uh, uh, the temptation good. So for them, uh, uh, clearly sharing data is better. So if, they, if that allows them to have better access to uh, the normal good seller. So the orange color here is the group that, uh, uh, that is weak wheeled they like uh, to have the normal good, right, which they enjoy. But on the other hand, they are vulnerable to the temptation good. So they don't want to actually get the advertisement uh, about the, 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 uh, the temptation good because they may not be able to resist the temptation, okay? So the, the gray color here at the bottom, so this is the group that, uh, that, 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 that don't care, right? So they're actually, uh, they're just there uh, acting as noise, all right? So, um, how do we model temptation, all right? So this will be my most abstract uh, uh, slide uh, in this talk. Uh, there are two widely followed approaches in economic literature about temptation. Uh, one is uh, uh, derived temptation through a dynamic uh, uh, inconsistency. So if you're familiar with the work of uh, David Leibson, right, hyperbolic discounting, so that's a, a, you know, a way you can get a, a, a temptation in the sense that uh, um, uh, when the consumer face a tempting good, like say burger, so you, you really, I mean, the, the, the eating burger now uh, fulfill your, 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 your desire, right? But the, you pay the cost, the health cost uh, 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 down to the future. To the extent the consumer uh, might have hyperbolic discount in the overweight present, the underweight future, so they may not be able to resist the temptation. So this is approach uh, uh, one can use to derive temptation, right? Um, we actually, uh, uh, after sort of a, a conscious choice, we, we actually uh, went for a different approach. So this is the temptation utility approach uh, from decision theory, uh, uh, following sort of the classic uh, approach of uh, 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 Dave Krabs about the menu preference. Uh, uh, Gu and Passendorf derived the sort of a class of utility function uh, called the temptation utility. Basically it's about uh, how a consumer uh, uh, may actually prefer a smaller menu rather than a big menu, okay? You, in standard utility theory, we know uh, how a consumer view a menu of choice, right? So it's basically about the maximum uh, 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 choice on the menu, right? So whoever delivered the max utility, uh, uh, that uh, the utility of the, the, the optimal choice determines the preference or the utility for the menu, right? right? And you know, there may be other junks uh, on the menu, it's irrelevant. You can always uh, choose not to take them, right? So, so this sort of the standard utility theory. So this temptation utility is about, uh, uh, the basic idea is about actually adding some uh, choice, uh, even though those choice may not be chosen by the consumer, but actually having them on the menu uh, may actually reduce uh, the, the, the utility of the consumer. So basically, so that those are the temptation good, right? So um, a, a consumer might be able to resist a burger with on the menu, but actually resist uh, the burger actually uh, uh, gonna cost, uh, gonna require mental effort, right? So, and, uh, and uh, you, you have to exercise mental effort to resist the temptation. So for that reason, put the, the burger on the menu already hurts, even though it may not be taken. So that's sort of the basic idea of this temptation utility. It's actually simpler than uh, uh, hyperbolic discount because we don't have to uh, 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 require sort of a dynamic framework. Here, uh, this is exactly our model. Our model is actually intrinsically a static choice. Basically, uh, 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 everyone faces sort of a, a consumer basically uh, potentially may receive uh, advertisement from different sellers and based on sort of what they get, so they make the choice. But the question is whether they want to share the data. If it depends on whether they share the data, uh, uh, that, that will affect whether uh, consumer or uh, sellers approach them. Okay, so, so this sort of our setting is actually uh, uh, intrinsically sort of a, a, a simpler static setting. So, so having this uh, uh, temptation uh, utility framework make actual analysis simpler. And then at the same time, this is sort of a, a axiomatic based uh, uh, framework which makes uh, uh, our uh, uh, normative analysis uh, well-grounded on a, a very solid uh, normative uh, foundation, right? So that, that's the reason we, we, we chose this framework. 
So let me quickly uh, walk you through this uh, temptation utility. Basically, this is a utility specify a consumer's uh, uh, a utility for a menu. So, so a menu is sort of a good, right? So, so the, 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 the consumer's uh, uh, utility for the menu is determined by the sum of these two optimization problems. So given the menu, say N, which contains so sort the of good A, good B, or, or maybe just one of them or none of them. So what's the, util uh, the, the consumer's utility for the menu uh, is determined by the sum of these two. The first optimization problem here determines the actual choice of the consumer. Basically, uh, to choose the consumer choose uh, 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 the choice that maximizes the sum of the two utility here. Uh, the first one, uh, 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 U here is the, the normal utility, so, so uh, uh, or sometimes also called commitment utility. V here is the special one, the so-called temptation utility. So basically, the consumer still sort of net out the sum of these two utility to make the choice from the menu. But on the other hand, uh, the maximum choice from this uh, uh, does not determine sort of the, the preference for the menu. So in fact, there's another term. Uh, minus the max of the 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 u the u uh, the, the the temptation utility. So this sort of is a, a cost of uh, self control. So basically, uh, the consumer may or may not choose the most tempting good out of the menu, right? Right. So, but if you don't choose the most tempting good from the menu, then you have to pay this cost of self control. So this basically uh, is sort of the new component in temptation this temptation utility framework. And the, because of this. Uh, a cost of self-control. Uh, this means that uh, a, a large menu actually may hurt. So if you put burger on the menu, even though the consumer may, cho may not choose it, but it still hurt the, the consumer because the consumer has to exercise self-control, which is mentally costly, okay? So this basically sort of is the, the framework we're gonna use. All right, so with this framework in mind, uh, uh, now let me specify these two goods. The normal good, good A, uh, induce only normal utility to every consumer, either strong wheeled or weak wheeled. And in fact, actually, we assume that uh, uh, the normal utility induced by good A uh, is random. Okay, basically, on the given day, whether I want to listen to this music or not is random. Even though I like music in general, but how much I like about it uh, is random. Okay, and in fact, it takes a, a, a value in uh, between zero and the U bar uh, uh, no, uh, with a no, uh, uniform distribution. The reason uh, we assume a random utility to simplify our analysis because it prevents uh, price discrimination by seller A. Even seller A knows I'm uh, a consumer who uh, like music. Uh, uh, he cannot uh, overcharge me because, uh, uh, because my, my reservation utility is not known uh, ex ante. Okay, so, so this sort of the point of this, this simplified our analysis uh, from price discrimination uh, of the normal good seller, which of course is potentially important, but nevertheless, uh, we want to keep uh, our focus on the temptation good rather than uh, this effect that's already well studied uh, uh, by the literature. All right, so good B, so the temptation good give a, a, no, a negative normal utility. So UB here is negative. So, so the point here is that the sort of a, this sort of meant to capture the fact that the temptation good is sort of an inferior uh, good, right? If you actually buy it, it hurts you in some ways. But on the other hand, it's tempting. So it delivers a sort of a temptation, uh, a utility component here, uh, which we specify as gamma i v bar minus u b. So gamma i here is sort of a, a, is a, a uh, uh, individual uh, coefficient that, that capture the fact that some of the weak wheel consumer are severely tempted, some are uh, only modestly uh, tempted. In fact, the gamma i, this is a personal coefficient, that takes a value between zero and one in the normal distribution. Okay, and uh, 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 this v bar here basically captures sort of this maximum amount of uh, 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 temptation utility. Okay, and. Uh, uh, we also put a minus UB here so that uh, uh, for a consumer, a uh, weak wheel consumer, in deciding whether to buy uh, the temptation good uh, when it's on the menu, is determined by the sum of uh, the normal utility and the temptation utility. If you take the sum, so then it basically we have gamma I V bar, right? So basically, a weak wheel consumer will only buy the temptation good if gamma I V bar is higher than the price uh, the seller charges him. All right, 
So this will lead to a utility of basically uh, you be the, the, the normal, uh, the, the negative uh, 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 normal utility minus the price. Uh, if the, the, the consumer end up buying the, the temptation good. The, the consumer may actually end up rejecting the, 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 the offer uh, if it turns out that his gamma is small, okay? So smaller than uh, 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 the price, right? So even in this case, uh, this consumer still suffer a loss, which is the cost of re resisting to the temptation, uh, which is uh, 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 UB minus gamma I V bar. Okay, so so in as you can see here, uh, when the, the temptation could gets on the menu, whether the consumer buy, uh, buys or not, if he's weak willed, he gonna suffer something, right? Either when he buys it, he pay the price and suffer negative uh, normal utility, or when he rejects it, he doesn't pay. But on the other hand, he has to uh, 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 suffer a mental cost. All right, so so this sort of the uh, 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 the uh, what's the temptation utility framework brings us. Um, and once we specify the individual utility function, you can see sort of the menu preferences are, are very simple. So there are, uh, these are the possible menus for each consumer, okay? Uh, for a consumer, he might get no advertisement from any seller. So basically this is now set. Or he can get uh, uh, a good A uh, 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 on the menu, or he can get good B, or he can get both, right? So this uh, depends on the advertise uh, uh, strategies of the, the two sellers, right? From a good, a strong will, the uh, uh, seller's uh, a consumer's perspective, he prefers a larger menu, right? He doesn't care whether, you know, the temptation good is on the menu or not, because he can always reject that without any cost, mental cost, right? So he just wants the A to be there because he prefer to receive, he, he, he prefer, he, he enjoys uh, consuming the normal good. And for that reason, he, he, he would like to share his data so that uh, uh, he becomes more accessible, more approachable uh, to sell A, right? But on the other hand, a weak-willed consumer has a, a dilemma. He also likes uh, the normal good, but on the other hand, he's hurt by uh, having this temptation good on the menu. So for the good, for the, for the weak-willed consumer, so, so there's a trade-off, right? So if you share your data, uh, you make yourself basically uh, 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 more approachable to both sellers, right? So uh, uh, the normal good seller knows you are there and you, you would like his good. So, 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 so seller A uh, more likely gonna uh, uh, advertise to you, right? But on the other hand, you are also become uh, uh, targetable by, by the temptation good seller. So, so this is the trade-off. This is the key trade-off uh, in this model, right? So in the end, each consumer's menu is random because it depends on seller's uh, uh, advertising strategy. And also it depends on the data sharing scheme uh, 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 on the platform, okay? So, so, so basically uh, in the model, we're gonna comparing, uh, 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 we're gonna uh, compare different data sharing schemes, okay? Uh, let me say a few words about good sellers. We have these two good sellers, seller A and seller B, right? So <clears throat> basically, so the, they face this pool of uh, 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 potential consumer out there and they're gonna send the advertisement uh, to, the, uh, to the consumer pool. Uh, we assume uh, the marginal uh, production cost of the good actually itself is zero, okay? So this makes our analysis uh, simpler, uh, especially our welfare discussion. But they face uh, advertisement cost. So depends on how much they send. For seller A, if they send uh, advertisement to CA uh, measures of consumer, so they pay an uh, increasing and the convex uh, cost of advertising. Basically, the more they send, each one become increasingly costly. Well, you might say sort of, uh, you know, in the digital age, send one message uh, costs zero, right? But on the other hand, we know consumer's attention is limited. You, if you flood consumer uh, with uh, uh, emails, with uh, advertisement, so, so this is actually gonna be totally counterproductive. So any uh, online uh, advertiser will actually charge more uh, to discipline sort of uh, 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 the sellers, not to uh, uh, overwhelm the consumers, right? So, so this basically reflect that. Okay, similarly for seller B. Seller B also uh, have a, a, a zero marginal cost of producing the good, but that they have to pay an increasing and the convex uh, cost of advertising to uh, the consumers, right? So then because of this uh, convex advertising cost, they need to be careful how to sort of design their advertisement strategy. And of course, uh, um, having more information about consumers, so that would be helpful, right? For, good, for seller A, uh, he only wants to approach 
uh, a strong wheel uh, in the blue pool and uh, and the weak wheel in the orange pool, right? So these are the potential consumers for its good. For seller B, you only want to approach those in the orange pool, right? So these are its uh, targeted, uh, that, that, uh, uh, those are uh, its intended consumers, right? So this basically is the, the problem. It's a very simple uh, 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 setup, okay? Uh, let me say a few words about the equilibrium. So we're gonna analyze uh, uh, standard rational expectations equilibrium. So as you can see, sort of this temptation utility, uh, you know, after utility function is specified, uh, uh, each consumer is actually fully rational in terms of uh, 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 making the choice, right? Either sort of selecting from the menu as well as sort of the preference for, for the menu. So that's they, uh, 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 all well specified. So basically the equilibrium we consider sort of cons each consumer make their uh, uh, optimal choice and the seller also uh, optimize uh, 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 their uh, uh, optim uh, advertising strategies, all right? So uh, the social welfare, let me uh, uh, highlight. So because marginal cost of production for sellers is zero, right? And the good price and the advertisements costs are all distributional, right? They're basically transferred between sort of uh, 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 people in this uh, ecosystem. Uh, we assume sort of the sellers are actually part of the, the consumer pool anyway. So in that sense, sort of eventually the social welfare is basically a uh, sum of a consumer welfare. Basically sort of uh, uh, those uh, uh, strong willed type, whether they receive the, the good A or not. So this is sort of their expected utility uh, uh, from good A. Uh, uh, and this uh, a weak wheel may also benefit from consumer good air, right? So based strong wheel and uh, uh, weak wheel, both sort of, uh, uh, we need to count their uh, utility from consuming a good air. And uh, the second uh, term here is basically the utility, the temptation utility of uh, uh, those weak wheel because they potentially suffer from uh, the temptation good uh, uh, when, whenever sort of uh, uh, their uh, uh, temptation good is on their menu, whether they consume it or not consume it, they all gonna suffer some uh, uh, temptation cost, okay? So uh, with this setup, it's easy to, the first best equilibrium is very simple, right? If there's a social planner who can sort of dictate sort of who gets what. So clearly the most desirable outcome is that the seller A advertises to all strong wheeled and weak wheeled consumer. Uh, so that uh, they all sort of uh, benefit from consuming uh, uh, the good. But on the other hand, the seller B advertised to no one at all, right? So we should just shut off a uh, seller B. <laughs> so, so that's sort of the, the I mean, th this sort of is not going to be reachable in practice. But on the other hand, this serves as a, a, a benchmark for us to evaluate sort of a, 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 a realistic outcome. So we are going to use the simple setting to evaluate the equilibrium under four different data sharing schemes. So there are two benchmarks. One is no data sharing at all, okay? So basically, uh, our sellers don't get any information about the type of sellers, uh, of consumers. Then they basically have to market to a dark pool, right? So, so this is meant to be extreme, right? Uh, and this will serve as a benchmark. And we also evaluate another extreme, say full data sharing. So basically uh, 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 the platform has uh, information about everyone and they share the information with all the sellers so that uh, 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 both sellers actually have full information about the type of each uh, individual, each individual consumers on the platform, right? So then they can do perfect uh, targeting, right? So, so these are two sort of uh, uh, extreme cases. Then we we'll use these two extreme cases as benchmark to evaluate uh, uh, both GDPR and the CCPA, right? So these are the two policy, actually consumer can have some choice whether you want to share your data or not, right? So, but they differ in the, uh, 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 in the default setting, okay? All right, first let me show you sort of the equilibrium without the any data sharing. So this meant to be an extreme, okay? So, so in this sort of, uh, uh, under this scheme, you can see basically uh, seller has no clue who is whom, right? So basically they have to uh, send the advice to a dark pool. Right. So then from seller A's perspective, uh, you know, advertising is costly and the precision is low. It's going to sort of, uh, uh, you know, sl uh, you know, <laughs> uh, choose uh, some amount of uh, uh, marketing, right, advertisement. And uh, because, you know, uh, the, 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 the utility for the normal good is random. So they, they cannot press discriminate anyone either. So they were gonna charge sort of a, a uniform price to everyone, which is half of the U bar, basically half of the maximum utility anyone can uh, 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 benefit from this good, okay? So this sort of a, a standard result uh, for monopoly 
but without sort of information, right? So same thing about the seller B. Seller B also has to target, even though it wants to target the, uh, those in the orange color, right? But it cannot really tell who is whom, right? So it will end up basically uh, uh, send some random uh, uh, advertisement uh, into the pool, uh, uh, basically potentially uh, uh, getting to everyone. Um, so the precision is low. It will end up being more disciplined not to target too many because it's costly, right? And they cannot discriminate anyone either because it doesn't know who likes this more than um, who is more tempted and who is less. So, so the price uh, a charge will be half of V bar, okay? Right, so this sort of the outcome in the, in the equilibrium without the, any data sharing. What about uh, the other extreme? Uh, let's imagine that uh, uh, the platform knows everyone uh, with the sort of uh, 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 the big data analytics. Uh, we might be exaggerating this a bit, but uh, on the other hand, uh, this serves as a very useful uh, benchmark, all right? So imagine uh, the platform knows everyone and actually pass along the, the, the information to both sellers. So then uh, 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 seller A can perfectly target those uh, in blue and orange, right? So these are sort of the intended consumers. And because now we send our advertisement, we'll reach the intended consumer with 100% precision, right? So efficiency is improved, it will advertise more, right? It will cover more consumers. In that sense, uh, this clearly improve the, the consumer welfare, right? Because it cannot uh, price discriminate everyone, right? Because even though they know these are the consumer who would like this good, but you can still cannot predict uh, who likes more than the other, right? So it's still charge the same price, okay? How about the seller B? Seller B now also knows perfectly who are in the orange color, right? And even more actually, our big data analytics can help it to further discriminate who actually are more tempted than the others, right? So, uh, so you will sort of uh, 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 target the, the, the weak wheel consumer with 100% precision. And furthermore, uh, you can also charge a price that's tailored uh, uh, based on each uh, weak wheel's uh, uh, temptation coefficient. Okay, so, so it, 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 this not only improves the targeting precision, but also improves uh, uh, the price discrimination from a seller B's perspective. So um, you can compare sort of the no data sharing with the full data sharing, you can see sort of a dramatically different outcome, right? Um, from seller's perspective, clearly uh, this benefits both sellers, right? Both A and B, uh, seller A and seller B, benefit from having more data, clearly. From strong wheel consumer's perspective, this is also better because uh, uh, this makes them uh, uh, better covered by uh, the more normal good seller, right? So uh, strong wheel consumer clearly prefer data sharing. But the weak wheel, actually, this is unclear because they face a trade-off, right? So on one hand, they benefit from the better coverage by, uh, by the normal good seller. But on the other hand, they also face, uh, 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 they're more exposed to the temptation good, right? So, so basically, there's a trade-off. And of course, uh, you can see that um, uh, for those uh, severely tempted, right? So, so they prefer uh, uh, actually uh, not to share. But on the other hand, those only modestly tempted, uh, uh, they will actually still, despite the trade-off, may still uh, uh, choose to share the data so that uh, at least they're, they're better covered by, by the normal good seller. Uh, their net uh, uh, welfare, uh, of the, the net welfare of the weak wheel that depends on sort of the, 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 the this uh, a crucial uh, model parameter UB, basically the normal utility of uh, uh, the temptation good. So uh, it's uh, easy to imagine when this uh, uh, temptation utility parameter UB is sufficiently negative, right? So the overall uh, utility of weak wheel may be uh, lower. Uh, by the data sharing. And in fact, it, it could be reduced by so much that actually even reduce the, 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 the full uh, social welfare, right? So basically, uh, the point here is that if the, the uh, temptation problem is sufficiently severe, uh, we can see full data sharing hurting social welfare, right? And of course, uh, uh, if this is sort of the, the problem, uh, this will motivate us to think about alternative arrangement, right? So um, both GDPR and the CCPA sort of are motivated potentially by this kind of situation, right? Some consumer benefit from, from data sharing, but some are actually potentially hurt. So here temptation basically, in our minds, this reflects uh, some kind of uh, uh, consumer vulnerability, right? They're basically potentially being hurt by, by data sharing, right? 
So both GDP and the CCPA is about the giving uh, each consumer the choice, right? So you can choose whether you want to share your data or not share your data, right? So of course, the strong will and the multi weak will might choose to opt in uh, to data sharing and thus benefit from the improved matching with seller A, right? But on the other hand, the severely weak will the consumer, uh, you know, they, they, can, they can choose to opt out and hide, hide away from seller B, right? So in that sense, so they can still protect them, right? So in this way, uh, you know, each one has a choice, then uh, potentially we can reach sort of a Pareto efficiency, right? So, so for that reason, sort of, I think there's this appeal, right? So by giving consumer the choice, uh, uh, these schemes are supposed to dominate both no sharing or full sharing, right? Because I mean, in no sharing or, or full sharing, there's no choice, right? Consumers, so they are passively sort of sign up to a blanket arrangement, right? So, so now the, the, this leads to the question, does this logic work? Give it, we'll give a consumer the choice uh, sufficiently, uh, provide the sufficient protection uh, 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 to the consumers. And if they do, which one is better? Because GDP and the CCP, that's still different, right? They're different in the default setting, all right? Right, so, so I mentioned already, um, on the GDPR, no data sharing is the norm, right? Unless uh, uh, it's the default, unless the consumer explicitly opt in. But on the CCPA, firms are allowed to freely collect data unless a consumer explicitly opts out, right? So, so this is sort of the key difference. So now let's talk about the sort of the, what happens uh, uh, under these two different schemes. Um, let's first consider GDPR, right? Under GDPR, so th this is the pool of the, the consumers, right? right? Each consumer has the option to opt in or opt out, right? So you can easily imagine, so the, the, the strong will that we are opting, right? Because they strictly benefit from uh, sharing their data with a, a seller A, so to, to benefit from their coverage, right? So this is this tricky issue about uh, uh, the, 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 the gray color, the, those third types. So these are the types who do not care. So to them, it doesn't matter really, right? Whether I share your data or not share your data, they don't care about either good A or good B, right? So, so this is actually a group initially when we sort of starting the model at the beginning, we only, we only seen GDPR, we, we actually face a dilemma. Given that they're indifferent, should they opt in or opt out? We, of course, in our mind, they should opt out, right? <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's by assumption, actually. It's kind of a, a very important assumption. We feel it's a bit ad hoc. But no, actually, CCPA is out, actually. <laughs> they differ, actually, on the default setting. And in that sense, sort of, let's make our choice very simple. So, so the, the, the type O uh, group will opt out by default, right? Because they don't care. And actually uh, uh, to sort of to opt out, uh, so, so it's naturally they just opt out, right? On the GDPR, right? So because to opt in, they actually have to send a different uh, uh, consent, right? So, so that, that's, uh, that, that takes extra effort. So, so here, uh, um, the third group here, uh, they automatically opt out by default, okay? So now given this, you can see, um, this is actually turns out to be very important because uh, you know, right? Wait, so, so, sorry, yeah. you have 10 minutes. Oh, uh, 10 minutes. Okay. All right. I need to speed up a little bit. Okay. So, um, then what about so the weak wheel consumers? So, uh, for the weak wheel consumer, each one faces this sort of trade off, right? I opt in, if I opt in, I can get the better coverage, uh, uh, by the normal good seller. But if I opt in, I also face, uh, the, the, I'm uh, also more exposed to a uh, temptation good. So, it's intuitive that uh, those modestly tempted one will opt in, right? So this will be the, the light uh, uh, color, the orange color uh, 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 consumers, right? But the other, most severely tempted will opt out. So we basically have this sort of split, right? And of course, this cut of gamma star star uh, is, is an equilibrium uh, 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 parameter, right? And given this is the pool, what about the seller A and seller B? From seller A's perspective, so of course they want to target those sort of once they're good, right? So it's clear that so those, all the consumers in the opt-in pool are as potential uh, consumers. So they will cover this, right? For them, this is perfect. So, so, so they will sort of uh, cover them in full, right? So, so this will reach sort of uh, what they will do under the uh, uh, full data sharing. But from seller B, uh, the temptation good seller, uh, the choice has been more subtle. It turns out that actually seller B is going to use a water feeding kind of strategy. They will actually target the both. Uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, weak wheel in the opt-in pool as well as consumer in the opt-out pool. 
uh, you know, that, that there's sort of a trade-off, right? So those in the input, you know for sure that we will, they want the, uh, 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 your good, right? So, and actually they can even sort of price discriminate them by charging sort of a price uh, exactly equal to their uh, 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 reservation value, right? So, but on the other hand, uh, uh, those most tempted ones actually in the opt-out pool, but they are kind of hide behind uh, those third type, right? So they cannot uh, sort of, the, if they target them, uh, precision is low, right? But on the other hand, they're more severely tempted. So, so this is the trade-off. It turns out that uh, um, uh, in the model, uh, we derive uh, in equilibrium, the weak will we actually uh, uh, prioritize the targeting of those in the, in the opt-in pool because the uh, 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 precision is high. Right? Only if you, they have more capacity, they will also reach out to those uh, in the opt-out pool. So this basically is the GDPR equilibrium. All right? So what happened under CCPA? Right? Under CCPA, the, uh, the key difference is that uh, uh, the default now is opt-in. Right? So perhaps not surprising, right? So, so uh, most of the digital firms are in California. So this is uh, 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 clearly a pro-business uh, 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 arrangement. So as before, uh, strong will will opt in no matter what, right? They, they don't care about being targeted. And uh, uh, the third type will be opt-in by default because uh, by default, a uh, firm can collect the data unless uh, uh, you uh, 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 take extra effort to, to sign some form, tell them to stop doing that. So, so I mean, if they don't care, uh, they won't do that, right? So, so that's why the third type is opt-in by default. Now, the problem, given this is uh, sort of the, 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 the landscape of the consumer pool, you can see um, the, the weak wheel consumer, they're basically sort of self-revealed in some sense, right? From a uh, seller A's perspective, right? You know, they, they just want to avoid uh, the third type. These are noise in the targeting, right? So given that uh, these sort of, the, the, those guys are already out, so it doesn't matter whether we will, that they're, they're opting opt out. They're already self-revealed to sell A, right? right? So in that sense, sell A can already cover all the strong wheeled and uh, weak wheeled consumer with or without uh, 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 the, the weak wheeled consumer opting to data sharing, right? So this is actually, it's, a, it's a sort of, it's obvious, but on the other hand, the sort of, this is sort of an argument that actually support the sort of, CC, the benefit of the CCPA in some sense, right? Because uh, the fact that the, the noise type already sort of self-revealed by default, right? So solar A can actually better cover uh, those weak wheels, even if they're hiding in the opt-out uh, opt pool. Right? Doesn't matter? Does that make sense? So this is sort of actually, you know, initially we thought, well, you know, uh, 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 GDPR is pro-consumer, right? CCP is pro-business. Uh, for that sense, you know, it's going to be always bad for consumer. But actually, there's a, a one benefit here. This is the benefit, okay? Um, now, actually, think about the seller B. Seller B, of course, uh, to the extent third type already revealed, then they already know these guys are, are weak willed, right? But then still there's uh, uh, one uh, 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 sticking issue. They don't know who is more tempted than the other, right? So they still don't know uh, 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 their temptation coefficient, right? So ideally, seller B wants to target those actually severely tempted, right? For that reason, actually, uh, so, so under this arrangement, uh, we can show that actually seller B want to actually commit to actually not to target any of those uh, uh, consumers who are in the opt-in uh, pool, okay? But they only target those in the opt-in out pool who are presumably more tempted, all right? In fact, actually nicely, uh, uh, in this uh, equilibrium, the, the cutoff is exactly half, okay? So, so mm, this is probably because uh, solar B in our settings is, uh, is a monopoly, okay? So with this, so that you can see uh, uh, what the seller A will do. Seller A is going to perfectly cover uh, all the strong wheel and the weak wheel the consumers, just as if all the data are perfectly shared, okay? So this is the advantage of CCPA, okay? Because uh, by making opt-in the default. And uh, seller B is going to uh, precisely target those in the opt-out pool. This is the pool of uh, most tempted consumer and also charge them a higher price, right? Okay. So now I, I, I showed you sort of the, these four different uh, uh, data sharing schemes, right? So now let me quickly mention the social ranking so we can sort of uh, uh, rank their social uh, welfare. 
Um, it's easy to see, actually, CCP is strictly dominated for data sharing. The reason is that uh, under CCPA, cellular A can uh, fully cover both uh, strong build and weak build consumers, right? Because uh, the noise type is already self-revealed. And the same time, CCP at least provides some protection to weak wheel the consumers, so even though not very strong protection, right? But never provide some, right? So this is enough to dominate the full data sharing, okay? So in that sense, when we talk about, well, which one is better, so we should just take a full data sharing out because it's strictly dominated by CCPA. What about among CCPA, GDPR, and the data sharing? We still have three others, right? So it's intuitive imagine. So the, the, these three arrangements differs in sort of a consumer protection, right? So of course, no data sharing offers the best consumer protection because it doesn't share any data, right? And the CCPA is the other extreme. It basically, it, it, by, by making sort of a, uh, the default, by making, uh, uh, opting the default, the CCPA uh, also uh, reveals a lot of consumer information, right? And the GDPR is somewhere in the middle. Okay, so with sort of this sort of a, a clear ranking in terms of a, a data protection, you can see uh, CCPA is superior in terms of social welfare if temptation uh, problem is sufficiently modest. Basically, when UB is close to zero, so CCPA will be the best arrangement. But the, if temptation problem is very severe, i.e. UB is very negative, then no data sharing is the best, okay? And uh, to the extent the GDPR is somewhere in the middle, right? Basically, they may exist in the middle range of UV, so that the GDPR is most desirable, basically in the middle. So it's a very, very intuitive ranking, right? So in talking about this ranking, I should uh, quickly highlight so the conceptual issue here is this externality in data sharing. Basically, the key point here is that uh, when one consumer share his data, his data uh, uh, reveal information to the seller not only about himself, right, but also about the other consumers. So this is sort of is a very important issue, basically, uh, uh, in this kind of discussion, right? So, so this externality basically determines sort of uh, the, you know, uh, 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 the ranking, the social ranking I mentioned, right? So opting out, opt out choice are supposed to make the equilibrium pretty efficient. But on the other hand, I mentioned to you that sir, no data sharing actually can be better than GDPR if you be sufficiently negative when the temptation problem is sufficiently severe. Why is that? It's exactly because of this externality. In fact, there's a negative externality. So basically opting decisions or opting choices by strong wheel consumer reduce the camouflage of weak wheel in opting opt out pool, right? Because when a large chunk of the people did, uh, leave the opt-out pool, you know, those weak wheel, you can hide there, but there's not much to cover you, right? So this sort of uh, is externality. And this negative externality dictates that when, uh, uh, when temptation problem is very severe, uh, uh, the social welfare actually gonna be worse, uh, even though uh, 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 on the GTPR, everyone can uh, choose, right? But I should mention, uh, uh, externality can also be positive. In fact, I also showed you that uh, uh, even though GDPR provides a stronger consumer protection than CCPA, but CCPA actually can do better if UB is only modestly negative, right? So, so this is because the positive, the, the data sharing externality has also a positive side. Basically, by making opting the default setting, seller A can already fully cover uh, both weak wheel consumer and strong wheel consumer, including those weak wheel consumer uh, are hiding in the opt out pool because the other guys already left, right? So, so you're hiding there, but the strong wheel, uh, the seller A can still find you, right? So basically, this sort of, uh, it's in, I mean, this is a point that sort of has been uh, uh, emphasized to sort of uh, in multiple papers lately by theorists like Doug Bergman and uh, Deron Smogler, basically emphasizing sort of this, this kind of uh, uh, social nature of data sharing. So it's clearly sort of, uh, uh, our model actually provides a very uh, nice contact to see this. And actually, I want to emphasize, we see actually here both positive and the negative side of the externality. So this is basically about what I want to say. I probably over time. So let me just uh, uh, wrap up uh, one minute to summarize what we do here. So this is a model of uh, our privacy preference through temptation utility, right? Basically, uh, we highlight the simple trade-off of data sharing. On one hand, data sharing improves matching efficiency between normal good seller and the consumer. On the other hand, it exposes weak real consumer to temptation, right? So data sharing comes with both positive and negative externality, right? So this is sort of uh, these two sides of externality determines basically uh, the net 
the, the social ranking of different uh, 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 data sharing schemes, GDPR, CCPA, and the no sharing, right, at all. So, so it's uh, curious to see actually, uh, 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 either one of these scheme actually can be optimal, depends on sort of uh, 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 the severity of the temptation problem here. Right. And the last I should mention, sort of the, you know, this has been a lot of discussion in analyzing data. This is the so-called the digital privacy paradox, right? So apparently, uh, consumers often state uh, in service they care about the uh, privacy. But on the other hand, uh, uh, many people also point out that it seems that they often freely share the data anyway, right? So this is framed as a paradox. But in our model, actually, you can see sort of, a, you know, data sharing choices basically reflect the intrinsic trade-off between cost and benefit, right? And in fact, actually, it's not only determined by uh, the consumer uh, uh, himself, and actually, it might also be affected by uh, everyone else uh, uh, in the ecosystem, right? So in that sense, this is a very uh, intricate uh, uh, trade-off here, right? So it's not really about the paradox, but rather about the uh, complicated trade-off. Yeah, that's all I want to say. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, great. Uh, thanks a lot, Wei, for uh, the great presentation. And everybody, please, if you have questions, uh, uh, raise your hands, and then we're going to call on you. But for now, we're going to ask a number of questions, which was uh, asked in the uh, in the chat. And Michael did answer some of them, but we thought it would be interesting to publicly kind of discuss them. So for the first question, I'm going to ask Jan uh, Starmans from uh, Stockholm School of Economics to ask uh, his question. Jan, you should be unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, great. Um, so it has already been answered. My question was about uh, the product, um, the good B. Um, and it seems that first best would be achieved by just forbidding good B. Uh, and Michael has already uh, suggested that that's true. Mm -hmm. but let me elaborate on that. I mean, that was just a clarifying yeah. question. But I guess it seems that maybe a more natural way to think about this is that the temptation good of person X might be the normal good for person Y. So, and, and then you can sort of naturally have a framework where um, one, you know, there are different consumers that prefer, that have, you know, for, for them, the normal good is a different type of good. And I wonder whether that sort of opens up questions of, um, which is a question that I also asked in the chat, is, is giving sort of people um, product specific data protection policies, right? To the extent that I make my, um, the, re the revelation of my information um, product specific. Mm -hmm. um, and whether yeah. that's sort of a policy and in that framework, I think it's a it's a more interesting kind of uh, yeah, to, to analyze right. and then related to that. I mean, just adding one dimension to it. That's sort of interesting because I guess revelation is not product, but firm specific. Mm -hmm. Right. And you might run into frameworks uh, into issues where, you know, Amazon sort of offers so many products. Right. If some of them are temptation goods and some of them are normal goods, do you want to do you want to for you personally, do you want to share with Amazon, right? It's not going to be product specific. So if you have mm -hmm. a um, sort of a um, um, firm dimension. Right, so uh, this is a, a, a very nice question. So I actually touched on uh, several important issues. So of course, uh, for the simplicity of the model, we have to sort of uh, uh, substantially uh, simplify uh, the setting to strip away many sort of uh, uh, important, uh, 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 potentially relevant issues, right? So this multiple goods, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, and the multiple temptation, I think is a clearly sort of uh, 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 relevant issue. And uh, we clearly made a, a choice here because uh, uh, we can put it in, it's just this uh, <laughs> inference problem become uh, much more complicated. I think, uh, I, I would imagine sort of at least some of our, uh, our intuition will still hold. So, but, but on the other hand, uh, uh, exactly the uh, robustness. I think this is sort of a robust issue. Sort of, uh, uh, we we will sort of uh, take time. We will eventually sort this out. But I think sort of your your question also touched on another important issue. Is really about the bundling, right? So it's about so the data sharing. Our model is actually bundled decision. When the consumer share his data, it's shared to both A and B, right? Seller A and seller B. So, so I think sort of, uh, you, you, I mean, it's natural for you to sort of think, well, why don't you debundle this, right? So, so, so let the consumer share sort of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, we're separate with uh, uh, seller A and the seller B. I think in practice, this can be done in some extent. But on the other hand, you have to recognize that uh, uh, temptation could sell the no star. No one would share data with it, right? If you tell you're sharing data with a gambling side, who would do that, right? <laughs> so, so, so in a sense, sort of in practice, 
uh, the seller will clearly uh, bundle itself with someone else, right? Basically by providing some convenience, right? Without the convenience, who would share the data, right? So this is, that, that's sort of, I think this is sort of, you, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> the essence of the problem, right? You know, to the extent that sort of these guys know, in practice, so they're all going to be bundled in one way or the other. I mean, you can't sort of set up sort of, a, it's going to be, I think in practice, it's going to be very hard to set up a regulation so that you can literally sort of uh, uh, isolate a uh, uh, temptation good seller from any, anything else, right? You know what I mean? Absolutely, but I think you know, oftentimes it's actually um, the the issue that uh, you might have a firm that offers both, right? And since mm -hmm. it is at the firm level, I mean, it's easy to just not share with a gambling company, right? But if you want to think about sharing it with Amazon or not, and Amazon offers both temptation goods and normal goods. Yeah, exactly. That's, the that's, the that's exactly the problem we address here, right? So you know, you, you will sign up to a platform where sort of it provides you all sorts of things, right? So among many convenience, so there's this uh, potential uh, sticking point, there's a uh, this, uh, this gambling side or something sort of hidden there, right? Do you know what I mean? No, absolutely. Yeah. So that, that's exactly our model. Uh, okay, great. So uh, I'm gonna, this is a great discussion, but I'm gonna kind of intervene because there are more questions that okay. uh, Wei has to answer. So uh, thanks to Wei and Jan. And so let's move on to the next question by Huan Tang, uh, whose current affiliation is HEC. So Juan, please ask your question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, so basically yeah. my question is about how including price discrimination would affect the key predictions of the model. Uh, so to begin, to begin with under CCPA, if you allow for discrimination, even the uh, strong-willed consumers will opt out, making it more difficult for sellers to target different groups of consumers. And uh, whether we will have unambiguous impact on uh, the amount of advertisement or on the overall social welfare uh, can be something uh, interesting if uh, you could make some comments on that. Right. Uh, in the model, we kind of halfway shut off uh, price uh, discrimination, right? So basically, we don't allow uh, 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 seller A uh, from price discrimination, right? By making uh, utility uh, random, uh, normal uh, utility for normal uh, good uh, random. But on the other hand, we do allow a temptation good seller to uh, price discriminate, right? So, so in that sense, we already have a, a part of this. Um, if we allow uh, sell A to price discriminate, I think sort of uh, this will make the benefit side smaller, basically, right? So, 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 so basically, uh, sharing data with sell A is not strictly preferred because uh, there's also another kick, right? So, so, so it might hurt you as well because of price discrimination. That's clearly going to complicate the sort of the analysis and make our message even more nuanced. Right? So whenever we say something, we have to cover up on that side. So, so I think that's sort of the key thing. But other than that, I think sort of whatever uh, our key message, right? So that the trade-off between you know convenience from normal good versus sort of temptation from uh, 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 exposure to the to the temptation, I think sort of this trade-off is. I, I don't think that that, that trade-off will be affected. Uh, by, by by allowing seller A to price discriminate, so 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 I think sort of uh, uh, in some sense I should mention your work, uh, your your job market paper uh, is very much related. If we want to quantify sort of uh, 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 exactly sort of how um, you know how this sort of uh, the trade off operate, I think sort of uh, uh, then we have to be more realistic to bring in sort of price discrimination as well as sort of the targeting by 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 uh, temptation good and all that. So altogether, to have sort of a, a more clear cut, the sort of quantitative assessment of the mechanism. I think for that clearly, I think we should uh, bring in a uh, uh, price discrimination as much as we could. But but to make this conceptual point, I think uh, it's better to leave out. Actually, even though the presentation I made is very simple, but uh, if you look at the appendix, actually, uh, it's quite. Uh, 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 complicated already because uh, uh, there are so many scenarios we have to go through. So, so some of the scenario actually I didn't mention in the presentation. So, so to 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 allow price discrimination, we just make this uh, uh, just uh, too 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 complicated in, in that mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for the very detailed answer. Sure, my pleasure. Uh, okay, great. So the next question would be from Erwan Quantan uh, from Wisconsin. Erwan, please ask your question. 
All right, thank you. And uh, thank you, Wei, for a very interesting presentation. So my, my question is simple. It's uh, what, what would happen if your consumers had budget constraints right. so that the uh, sellers are competing for a market of, final, uh, of finite total size? Right. Uh, this is a very good question. Michael, you want to get this question? <laughs> hey. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in for this one. We, we did have a budget constraint in the earliest versions of the model. It's actually what that does is that introduces some cross effects between pricing because now seller A has to internalize the price seller B will tar uh, charge as well as the advertising policy. But what we kind of found at least was there's a sense for the most tempted consumers would actually be strongly pulled towards good B and that might actually crowd out good A. It's not necessarily clear that just having good A is going to solve the temptation problem just because with a limited budget you're going to go to good a and you know you won't buy a video game we actually found some evidence in that early version of the model back over a year ago that you would find crowding out in the reverse direction which is that the most t tempted guys would actually miss out on the normal good so having a fixed budget constraint can actually exacerbate this problem and in a extended setting which can from a conceptual standpoint if you allow people to borrow to kind of finance their addiction you know, you give payday loans to alcoholics, or to people buying video games, you let them do it through Apple Pay on their credit card. Um, it could actually exacerbate the welfare problem by making them also have debt, not only consumption of the temptation good. So it could actually make the problem worse, we find, because of this crowding out and, and potentially indebtedness that could come with it. Thank you. Um, okay, great. So the next question would be from Navid Kana from Michigan State. Uh, uh, Naveen, uh, you should be unmuted. Hello. Uh, hi, Wei. Uh, enjoyed it. So, I, I, my question was that you know, moderate consumption of uh, temptation good is probably a positive, right? I, I consume some of those. I don't overconsume them. So the problem is with the people who are going to do it excessively, mm -hmm. and if. If the people are interested in both goods, I presume the problem for both the sellers and uh, the consumers is going to be more complicated. And I was wondering whether you have a feel as to how your ranking of policies is going to get impacted by that. I know mm -hmm. Michael did respond to that, but uh, I'd be interested in knowing what your opinion is on this. Right. So, yeah, so, so here we, again, this is a model simplification we uh, consciously made that to simplify the analysis uh, uh, by making uh, the temptation good sort of strictly inferior in the sense that the UB is always negative, right? So I think sort of more realistically, um, maybe UB is sort of, um, you know, not always negative for all consumers, right? So some actually might actually enjoy sort of gambling uh, by some small amount and also enjoy playing video by some small amount as long as you don't do it excessively, right? So, so, so in that sense, sort of only uh, those addicts are sort of really sort of, uh, uh, let's call them to be sort of temp tempted, right? Because some you know, uh, casual players are actually not really tempted, right? They're just for fun, for relaxation, right? So, 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 so here, so basically we, we kind of cover out this sort of group of, uh, 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 severely sort of uh, addicted ones as the temptation guys here really so in that sense right so but I I I I am I, I, sympathetic to sort of uh, your 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 concerns is that eventually I mean this is sort of uh, this model we made it to make some conceptual point here is not really sort of a, a to sort of a, a, a serious quantitative assessment. I think at some point it might be necessary, right? To, to, to sort of quantify, you know, what's the fraction of sort of tempted consumer here in the pool and sort of what the degree of the temptation is, which eventually gonna affect this ranking, right? So that's why sort of in the ranking result we provided is sort of a, uh, when you be sufficiently severe versus modest, right? So it's kind of all, all these are qual qualitative assessment in that sense. Does that make sense? So we're not taking very strong stand on this. But of course, eventually, I think maybe not for us, somebody sort of more, more capable in quantifying the model and the connecting the model to data need to do that, right? So, so make sort of the, the temptation not strictly inactive, but, but maybe to even introduce some modestly uh, positive uh, utility from sort of a relaxation and as, as sort of a, a, a entertainment, right? 
So, so I think uh, I think that, that can be done. It's just going to be again. I think uh, uh, we just make the uh, at this point to do that. We 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 just make the presentation very confusing. Thanks. Uh, go ahead, Navin. Oh no! I so, so basically, what I was curious is whether you thought that the ranking of your policies would be impacted in any way. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, uh, let me show you <laughs> the ranking. Uh, because there's going to be more noise in the system, so I don't know how that is going to you're going to take some your, your trade-offs. Okay. I, I actually, I, I think actually, conceptually, I don't think so, because uh, again, this is sort of uh, our, our conditions about the temptation problems uh, are sufficiently severe, right? So in a sense, if we sort of uh, agree on sort of defining sort of the the tempted group to be the group actually are sort of clearly addicts rather than sort of those you know those uh, uh, casual players who actually uh, play the game for entertainment for fun those are not weak will the consumers in our model right so then then I don't think sort of uh, this will affect uh, uh, the message the key qualitative message of the model does that make sense. Um, okay, um, uh, I'm sure it was great. So thanks, Naveen. And uh, so let me move on to the last question before we run out of time. Um, Ehsan Azamsa, uh, who was at U Chicago, uh, please ask your uh, question. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for a great presentation. Uh, so basically, my question is about network effect because in the market marketing literature, there's discussion about how this network effect and network effects are important in uh, advertising the strategy. And basically, I think that these network effects uh, uh, could magnify or, or revitalize some of the, the some of the channels here. So I was wondering that the, how it would impact the result. And to be clear about to be more clear about the network effect that I'm talking about is that really, when you find a gamer, it's more likely that his or her friends are also gamers. So basically. So it it may be better for the for the like a gaming company to target the to to target the gamers more like like aggressively. So that's the question. Thank you. Sorry, I'm I'm not sure I fully captured the sort of the, the question. So Mike, did you get it? So something about the social network. Um. So I, I think it's. A in terms of like a network effect that the sense that you know players are at least in the video game somewhat connected to each other if you target one you might be able to catch on others mm -hmm. my sense of a network effect in that respect is that it could actually exacerbate the problem in the sense like if you're the only one on world of warcraft even if you're very tempted it's right. not very fun in that sense so i think being able to get the most tempted on first can actually be very beneficial to seller b because now you know there's a group of, of dedicated people to this video game um, that would be playing it that might get less tempted or even like mildly positive uh, benefits from, from playing video game people to join as well. It's one reason why like a lot of video games when they're being launched on an app offer like these rewards for milestones to get people to sign up is to try to generate this network effect um, to then extract profit from it. For some other temptation goods though, like alcohol, it's hard to see the network effect there. I mean, you know, alcoholics, I, maybe they like drinking together in some sense. So it might be more specific to the type of temptation good, but I think it would exacerbate the problem in the sense that it makes temptation stronger when you know there are other people playing as well, in the case of at least video games. Right, I think this is a very uh, important effect, yes, the, the social network aspect of it. Of course, in the model, <laughs> when I try, try to bring everything here, but, uh, but as Michael mentioned, right, so social network actually will amplify this because in some sense sort of emphasize the externality, right? So there actually, social network actually will make the externality even stronger in a sense when your friend opt in, right? So then you, you are halfway revealed already in a sense, right? So, so this makes sort of the, I think sort of the externality problem really more severe, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Uh, thanks so much, Wei and uh, Mike and everybody for participation. And thank you everyone for coming and we're looking forward to seeing all of you next week. And uh, it's gonna be at the same time and we're gonna hear Sydney Ludwigsen from NYU. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you.